Hmm, I wonder where we are. The pyramids give it away, don't they? This is Egypt. Can you imagine having an Easter egg hunt here? Where would you hide the eggs in the desert? What do you think would happen to the chocolate? So if I told you that Easter began in Egypt, would you be surprised? Of course, rabbits, eggs and chocolates don't have anything to do with Easter. Easter is when we remember that Jesus died on the cross to take away the sins of the world and how God raised him from the dead. Jesus dying on the cross for us was God's idea and he had been planning it for a long, long time. He needed a way for us to be clean from all our sin so we could be friends with him and he could let us into heaven. What has Easter to do with Egypt? Well, let's see. God's people, the children of Israel, were living in Egypt. God had used a man named Joseph to relocate his people there so they would not die from a famine in their own land. The Israelites in Egypt had prospered and increased in numbers. When a new pharaoh became ruler of Egypt, the name of Joseph meant nothing to him. He looked at all the Israelites and said, There are too many of them. We will make them our slaves. The Israelites were treated very badly. They had to make bricks for buildings and they were beaten. They cried out to God to save them. God heard their cries. He sent a man named Moses. Moses told Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites leave Egypt and treated them worse than before. So God sent plagues upon the Egyptians, but not his people, the Israelites. The plagues were all the water turning to blood, a plague of frogs, a plague of gnats, a plague to kill all the Egyptians' livestock, a plague of boils, a plague of hail that destroyed the Egyptians' fields, a plague of locusts, and a plague of darkness so none of the Egyptians could see anything for three days. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and he still refused to let the Israelites leave. God told Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will let you go. On the 10th day of the month, every man who was head of a family was to sacrifice a lamb. Those who couldn't afford a lamb should join with a family that had one. The lambs must be one-year-old males without defect. God's people obeyed and each family sacrificed a lamb. God then told them to put some of the blood of the slain lamb into a basin. Then, using a bunch of hyssop, a small bushy plant, dipped in the blood, they should smear the top and sides of the door frame of the house where they were going to eat the meat. God explained that that night he was going to pass through the land to bring judgment. But if he saw the blood on the doorposts of a house, he would pass over, those inside would be spared. So the Hebrews did as God instructed. That evening, God's people dressed ready to leave Egypt and sat down for a meal they would later call the Passover, for God would pass over them. Moses explained that the Passover meal was to be celebrated every year and when children asked what it meant, they were to explain its meaning and tell how God had spared those homes covered by the blood of the Lamb and how he had set his people free. At midnight, the Lord passed over the land and the firstborn son of Pharaoh and every Egyptian family was found dead. The firstborn of every animal was slain too. There was weeping and wailing in every house, except those houses with blood on the doorposts. That night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people and go and worship the Lord God. Take your families and animals with you. Please bless me. God's people packed their belongings. The Egyptians, afraid that they might all die, gave them gifts of silver and gold 
hurry and leave, they urged. God's people rushed off so quickly they did not have time to add yeast to the dough they had made for bread. They had been slaves for 430 years and now they were free, just as God had promised. Jesus is called the Lamb of God. It was the time of Passover when he was crucified on the cross. He is the perfect lamb that was sacrificed for us, just like the lambs in Egypt. His blood destroyed sin and death. Everyone who believes in him will be saved. Jesus sets us free from sin and death. Now you know that this time of year, the time of Passover, is so much more than rabbits, eggs and chocolate. As lovely as they may be, they are a distraction. Easter is the very special time that reminds us God sent his only beloved son Jesus to die in our place, taking the sin of the whole world on himself so we could be free. God has a special book called the Lamb's Book of Life. In it are the names of every person who has accepted Jesus as their saviour. The names of those who will live with God in heaven forever. Having your name in that book is more important than anything else. Is your name written there? God has known since before the world was made. But perhaps today is the day you will know your name is written there. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen.